three stocks at a 52 week low. Davida, Lucid, Amazon. For those of you guys who are new to this channel, please subscribe. Trust me when I say you'll want to watch our video if you want to understand money and investing a lot better. We're not like those other YouTube hypesters. We actually understand what money is. We understand what investing is. Guys, these three stocks are 52-week lows. A wonderful place to start for value is at 52-week lows. But just because a stock is selling at a 52-week low does not mean it's a good value. That's why we're going to use our eight-pillar analysis our stock analyzer tools to figure out what the right value is for these companies. Mo, what the heck does DaVita do? Dialysis. Dialysis around the country. From my understanding, uh, actually, my aunt is doing dialysis at DaVita right now. Oh, and that's I a hear, sick story. Well, I mean, it's a, it's a boots on the ground, as they say. But I hear they're a very good company. Gotcha. Okay, so... They're all time high, according to our software. It's 136 bucks a share, and it's it's 52 week low is 65, and it's currently at 72. So it's off its 52 week low, um, which is fine. So guys, the stock has fallen. I mean, look, this is the last one year. I mean, it's just fallen from here. Now, this is a company very low PE of 10, five year PE of 9.7, profit mar- high gross margin, but very low profit margins, enterprise value of 21 billion with a market cap of 6.8. So what does that mean? A ton of debt. Yeah. The difference between market cap and enterprise value is essentially the debt on the company. I'm not going to get into the exact calculations of it, but it's essentially that is a lot less equity than debt in here. Okay. Now, and now when this com- this company deals a lot with insurance. Correct. So that alone and government. A li- government, a lot of government receives pro- approximately 69% of sales at government primary Medicare reimbursement rates. Wow. 30, 31% coming from commercial issuers. Well, if you're like us and you believe the government's here to stay, um, <laughs> let's check out the eight pillars here before I get into it. Oh, wow. Shares outstanding, down 50%. They've bought back that many shares, huh? And they have 35% of this market. Holy 200, cow. 240,000 patients seen globally each year. They have a cruise ship. What do you mean they have a cruise ship? Yeah. Dialysis cruise ship. They have a dialysis cruise ship so people can go hang out with it. Oh, that's a great... That's incredible. Yeah, 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 three days a week. That's incredible. Holy cow, that's a great idea. It is. All right, so again, very low PE, very low price of free cash flow. That probably is why they're buying back shares. So this is a smart per- idea of buying back shares. Remember what I said about debt? Really high debt level compared to free cash flow. Now, is that, is that good or bad? Well, I could look at their 10K and see what their average interest rate is. But as you guys have seen the last year, interest rates have skyrocketed. So when they're debts come due and they have to refinance, it's really going to drive up their interest costs. With such a low profit margin, that concerns me a lot. Yeah. Okay. So when it comes to this company, I know it's attractive because of the PE, but just be careful because of the debt. Make sure you understand what debts are coming due and when, and see how these margins are going to go because these margins aren't very great for the company. Like, let's say, let's look at 10 years ago, $11 billion in revenue. Five, yeah, they've been pretty consistently 5%. And in a lower interest rate environment, it can really exaggerate that profit. So just be careful there. All right, next company, Lucid. Beautiful car. Yeah, very nice car. Absolutely beautiful car. Absolutely, absolutely beautiful car. Wow. $12.28, all-time high, February of 2021, back when ARC and all these hype companies were the highest, $65 a share, 52-week low of 1089 when stock mo told you to buy it oh so stock mo and then you almost got lucky again here but now now you're not lucky i bet you i guarantee you probably made a video here going it's awesome maybe here going yeah i was right okay so this is a little kitty cat for him (laughs) that is a cat that's adorable (laughs) so when it comes to lucid guys it's just it's a speculative play is it a cool car company yes is their revenue and profit justifiable right now no Look at their quarterly revenue and profit. I mean, it's it's just disgusting. Major, major revenue. I just... <sighs> no, no, not making money yet. Shares outstanding. Look at this. Okay. Just, I, guys, I don't know. Without going any further in this thing, not enough data. It's, just, it's a very speculative play. I mean, look at analyst estimates. They're estimating $1.24 in loss, and five years from now, $1.08 in loss. It's still going to be losing. I don't... I, There's so many other great investments out there. With this company, the price to sales ratio is 55. The average car car company is 0.3 to 1. You know what I find? 55 times higher than that. Also, you know what I find funny here? What's that? Look at the number of analysts. This tells me, I mean, usually you'll see it'll dwindle, but you'll see, I don't know, 30 here, 40. And then nobody knows what the hell to put. So they just don't put an just don't put an analyst. I, I just think it's a very it. difficult company. Twenty billion dollar market cap. Yes, it's exciting. It's fun, but I look at it going. Eh. Let the company get more sure. stable. 
I'm ignoring this company completely until I can understand how they're going to make money because there's no free cash flow. There is no earnings. There's no, I just look at it going. And frankly, with a beautiful the car, by the way, beautiful car, but with the competition that's coming in in the electric car space, it, it was easy for Tesla to come out there and have a near hundred thousand dollar car. And they were the only game in town. Now the average price of a lucid car, it's a lot. I mean, their highest, their most expensive car right now is the Lucid Air. It's about 165000 Oh, wow. That's as of four months ago, and I haven't checked if they've done any price increases. So it's a hard market to be in. To, and to, get a, to become a big car. car company. I mean, look at Ferrari. Let's look at Ferrari. How much they, how much they, so their average car, Ferrari is selling for 7.7 .7 times price of sales, but their profit margin and gross margin are much higher than other car companies. And they're not selling a ton of cars. They do 30, they had $39 billion market cap. So double what, what uh, Lucid does. Sorry, double the market cap of Lucid and the revenue is 5 billion versus a few hundred. I don't, it just, it doesn't add up to me. I look at that going, Ferrari can justify the high sales price because they're not trying to sell a, a million cars a year. They're not doing that. The cheapest car is 87,400. Oh boy. I mean, it's gonna be a tough, uh, look at the Air S S Sapphire is 200. Click on that one, would you? I wanna see what that looks like. Looks like the other ones, I mean, but just. It's, I think they all Is there an interior the picture? It's Listen, just, they're beautiful yeah, cars, guys. They're very nice. I've seen a couple of them on the road. What's the but, range on them? Um, you can pay with Apple Pay. Look at that. 516 miles, I'll believe it when I see it. Wow. 406 miles, 406 miles. I mean, that's pretty good. My Taycan gets like 200. Yeah. And it, well, the average, like 175, 180 in the winter, 225, 230 in the summer. So the average is about 200. Yeah. Okay, so this is what I look at Lucid going, I'm just passing on it completely. It's not, I don't even know what to pay for it. That's the issue. So when I don't understand it, it's in the too hard, comp too complicated, too hard pile, I move on. For that reason, I'm out. Yes, but now let's go to Amazon. Amazon, Amazon, Amazon. All time high, 188.65, 52 week low of 85 bucks, and it's currently around 90 some dollars, 93? 98. 98. 98 bucks, yep. okay. So guys, here's something I'm going to say about Amazon. They're, they have guided to about breaking even in the fourth quarter, and they're expected to do $150 billion in revenue. Guys, this is a company that makes very little profit. 2.3% in the last 12 months, 4.2% average over the last five years, gross margin of 13%. Walmart, Walmart's gross margin. Look at the gross margin for Walmart. 24.6%, almost wow. double. What is gross margin for every extra dollar they bring in revenue? How much of that is profit before overhead? How can Walmart with all these fixed costs so big without their own AWS? Like AWS is a high margin business. The cloud business is like 80, 90% margin, if not more. Yeah. And they're sitting there and they can't even beat Walmart's gross margin. They're, they, they just announced that their, their devices business is losing $5 billion a year. I literally cannot imagine making $150 billion and breaking even. And that's what they're going to do. I'm just, I've always been skeptical of Amazon. So let's go look at our, let's go look at the numbers and run it through Stock Analyzer tool. So this is the eight pillars for Amazon. Guys, look at this. A five-year PE of 67, a five-year price to free cash flow of 171. Cash flow Big. dropped $40 billion. <laughs> Shares outstanding up 5.9%. And guess what? I'd be doing this. I'd actually have it 59% if I had idiots paying these huge prices. Low ROIC. The revenue growth there, the profit growth is, I mean, look at the profit growth. On $280 billion in more revenue, they've only generated less than 1% in extra profit on that. Hmm. This is a company with AWS. It's the leader in global cloud compute, cloud spots, um, cloud space. Leader by far, actually. By far. Yeah. What the hell? I know. Let's go to analyst estimates. Oh, wow. Look at this jump. Look at this jump. 10 cents this year to $24. <laughs> Interesting way of getting there. How too. are they going to do that? Interesting way of getting there. Wow. 2,300%, 65%, 145% growth, and 150% growth. What is going on? So $24 a share, Mo. Let's do this math. Yeah, what is this? How many shares outstanding do they have? Let's see here. Come on. So go to the income statement all the way to the bottom. 10 billion yeah. shares. 10.2 billion. So let's call it 10 billion. Okay. Times 10 billion equals $240 billion in profit. Agreed? Yep. Okay. And in 20, December 2020, in 2026, they're expected to do $833 billion in revenue. So, so 240. 25%. No, 33%, even worse. Oh, even better. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, 33%. So, oh. this is a company that is currently making 2.3% a year with a gross margin of 13%. Now, they're going to have a bottom line profit of 33%, which means their gross margin has to be Microsoft has a bottom line profit of 33%, and their gross margin is 70%. Guys, I just lost all respect for these analysts. 
I don't understand how that happens. Hype. How the F is that going to happen? And actually, it's quite a bit of analysts. For I mean, we usually see a go to 28 analysts at the end. And the thing is, look at the range. The, the lowest 23, 30, and yeah. the highest 24. So either we're crazy or they're crazy. And they, by the way, they're investing a lot of money in the business, which is bleeding out their cash and probably have a lot of depreciation there. Boy, that's a big, big, big jump. I don't know about this one. It's unrealistic. But let's go to our stock analyzer tool. All right, Mo, give me low, middle, and high. Five, seven, and nine. Five. Can we do four, seven, and 10? Yes. Okay. I like to go on the low side, pretty low number. Okay. Profit margin. Mm. Uh, two. I think that's low, but go ahead. Uh, three and four. Oh, see, I disagree. Two. F- I think. Two, four, and six. I actually think 3.5, okay. six, oh, wow. and 8.5. And here's why. Yeah, two if they are able to really drive AWS a ton, uh-huh. yes, they could easily make that. In fact, I'd be, I'd be comfortable going four, seven, and 10 here. Because I do think they're going to have higher than last year. I think they're going to, I think their low end is going to be like this. Okay. Now, what even if they keep driving that side, but they keep getting hammered on the other side? But wait a second. At 4% profit margin, at 4% profit margin, yeah. if they're able to go revenue at... 7% a year for 10 years, that's doubling. And their current revenue is what? 400, 450 billion. 500 billion. Yeah, 500 billion. And then at 4%, that's $40 billion in profit divided by 10 billion shares. It's less than $4 a share. And I think that's, I think that's a very, very good low assumption. Okay. It's my opinion. All right. Free cash flow margin. Same thing. Yeah, let's do the same thing because I'll probably stabilize at that right. point. Now, PE, guys, the PE that we want is what's the PE going to be at the end of these 10 years? The larger the company, the lower the PE should be. Now, this will be a moat, so you can justify a higher PE, but the historical average is 15 or 16 for companies in the market. And usually the larger, larger companies with a low ROIC have a lower PE. Mo, you tell me. 13, 15, 17. I like it. And you might be sitting there saying, oh my God, these guys are crazy. Guys, if you think we're crazy by saying that, you don't understand history and I apologize. And if you're open to this going, man, why would they do that? It's because history shows that the average PE is 15 or 16 and the larger and larger a company is, the less growth potential it has. And therefore the lower PE should apply. Now, finally, for desired annual return, guys, you can get nine or 10% over very long periods of time in a, sh- in a low cost ETF that does n- requires zero work. So if you're gonna own an individual stock, we recommend a higher desired return, which is a larger margin of safety. And as you make higher and higher assumptions, higher margin of safety. Mo, hit me up. 12 and a half, 14 and a half, 16 and a half. I like it. I'm, hit the analyze button. I'm trying to like, in my mind, think of what number is gonna spit this spit out here. I think it's going to be really low. Oh, it's going to be really low. And it should be. Now, guys, as you watch these numbers, don't just jump in and buy or don't buy or sell your, do more research. But also when I first started doing this, the numbers were confusing to me. The stock analyzer tool was hard to use, but if I did it a few times, it became a lot easier. And it's the reason why this is our number one piece of software on our entire software. So again, everythingmoney.com after this video, go check it out. Less than a dollar a day, you can have the software and everything part of it, including the community. Boom. Oh, I'm actually surprised. Whoa, that's way higher than I thought. 25, 82, and 50. Oh, I thought high side was going to be like 45 bucks. Yeah, that's what I thought. So guys, the middle range only has to fall in half. You might be sitting there saying, oh, you idiots, I'm going to fall in half. Well, it's already fallen in half once (laughs) (laughs) and it's overpriced. So we'll see what happens. Guys, thanks very much. Don't forget to check out everythingmoney.com. Take care.